Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Grixis Pirate Tribal deck, which features one of the Jumpstart cards. At 3 mana we've got Corsair Captain, a 2-2 Human Pirate at rare, and when the Captain enters a battlefield we get to make a Treasure Token, which we can sacrifice to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool, and other Pirates we control get plus 1 plus 1, so a nice Anthem effect for the deck. Now, whenever we're building a tribal deck, we want to try and figure out what separates this particular tribe from other tribal decks. And in the case of Pirate Tribal, it's the number of one drops the tribe has access to. We've got a whopping 24 one drops in this deck, and they're all pretty decent. Either they have some evasive ability, some utility like Fanatical Firebrand, or they can attack for two damage. So we want to take advantage of all these one drops by putting them in the same deck, playing a low land count, and then playing some lords like the Corsair Captain and the Dire Fleet Neckbreaker, giving attacking parts we control plus two plus oh, and the Corsair. Captain also synergizes nicely with all these one drops since we can potentially play Corsair Captain on turn 3 and play an additional one drop alongside it by sacrificing the treasure token or we can potentially save up our treasure by then playing a neckbreaker on the following turn since we're only playing 20 lands so getting to 4 mana can be a little bit tricky otherwise. So let's take a look at the entire deck. We also get to play with Gigantha the Wellspring in the companion slot. I don't expect to actually cast it in any of our games today, but it is kind of a free roll, so take it or leave it. Then at 1 mana we've got Siren Storm Tamer, a 1-1 flyer that we can sacrifice for a blue mana to counter target spell or ability that targets us or a creature we control, so it can potentially protect one of our more important creatures like the Corsair Captain. Then we've got Spectral Sailor, a 1-1 flyer with flash, and for 4 mana we can draw a card, so potentially gives us a mana sink in the late game. Then a Grasping Scoundrel is a 1-1 that gets plus 1 plus 0 as long as it's attacking, so attacks as a 2-1. We've got Daring Buccaneer, a 1 mana 2-2, two -two, and as an additional cost to cast Buccaneer, we either reveal a pirate card from our hand or pay 2 mana. So usually we're going to play the Buccaneer in the early turns when we still have a few pirates in hand. Then we also have Fanatical Firebrand, a 1 mana 1 1 with haste, that we can tap and sacrifice to deal 1 damage to any target, so it can potentially take out some 1 toughness creatures from the opponent. And then Rigging Runner is a 1 1 first strike and has raid, so it enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it if we attacked this turn, so it's usually a 1 drop we can play on turn 2. And then we don't have any real 2 drops in the deck, although we can easily just play 2 more 1 drops on turn 2. And we do get to play Lookout's Dispersal, which is a 3 mana instant but costs 1 less to cast if we control a pirate and then we get to counter target spell unless this controller pays 4 mana. So nice 2 mana counter spell as long as we control a pirate and gives us a nice answer to potential sweeper effects, which our deck is otherwise pretty weak to. And then at 3 mana, of course, we've got our Corsair Captain, as well as Ruin Raider, which is a nice source of card advantage in the deck. It's a 3-2 with a raid, saying at the beginning of our end step, if we attack this turn, we get to reveal the top card of our library and put that card into our hand, and we lose life equal to the card's converted mana cost. And given that the converted mana costs in this deck are so low, we won't be losing a ton of life to the Ruin Raider, but we will get to draw an additional card each turn. And then topping off our curve at 4 mana, we've got Dire Fleet Neckbreaker, 4 mana for a 3-2 Orc Pirate, saying attacking pirates we control get plus 2 plus 0, including the Neckbreaker itself, so that makes for a nice finisher in the deck as well. And then going over the mana base, we do get away with playing all these 1 drops, mostly because we have such a good mana base thanks to Unclaimed Territory, which enters a battlefield naming pirate, and then it taps for 1 colorless or 1 mana of any color that we can only spend to cast creature spells of the chosen type. So it's not going to make blue mana for Lucan's Dispersal, and it's not going to make blue mana for the activated ability from Storm Tamer or Spectral Sailor, but it's still much better than an Ancient Ziggurat, which we can't really play in a deck with Lucan's Dispersal, and it's also a bit of a number with Spectral Sailor as we can use it to pay for the ability at all. And then moving on, we've got four copies of Blood Crypt, two copies of Steam Vents, two copies of Watery Grave, and then all eight of the new pathways, the Clearwater Pathway and the River Glide Pathway. So no basic lands in the deck, so we're taking a bit of a gamble here, hoping the opponent doesn't use cards like Ghost Quarter or Field of Ruin. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with an acceptable hand can play a bit of a control game with Spectral Sailor into Dispersal and then Ruin Raider to draw some cards. Yeah, I guess I'll just play the territory for now. And we'll flash in Sailor end of turn, or I can play the uh, Firebrand turn 1 attack and then turn 2 
keep up Dispersal and Sailor. So if we don't have to counter anything, we get to Flash and Sailor instead. But the Sailor is a little bit better if we do end up casting Dispersal on turn 2, because then it's an evasive attacker to enable a Rune Raider. So I'm definitely incentivized to cast my Dispersal here. And Paradiser is a fine target. Right, another Dispersal. Probably still going to tap out for Rune Raider now. So we can attack. And wave the pirate flag. Only take one damage. Another Paradise Roots. Could be some sort of hexproof aura deck, who knows. I don't mind trading a Ruin Raider for Paradise Druids, because we're going to be ahead on board and have a counter spell in hand. So... I'll trade if they want to. And then, gotta make sure to keep up a Watery Grave. An extra Neckbreaker could be a nice finisher. Opponent knows about it now. Season of Growth they can have. Even if I counter an Aura now, they will get to draw a card. But I just want to limit their board presence here, since we're going to try and close out the game in one or two attacks. I'll say that I can maybe kill with Firebrands. And our opponent concedes, so we can play Neckbreaker, kill Allsade, and attack for 6 in the air, plus 5 more from the... 3-2, so that's not quite lethal, but uh, yeah, our opponent would be pretty low and then they would be facing a pretty big board, so unless they've got some lifelink enchantments to put on the Paradise route, they would be dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this sounds pretty decent. I'll have to make some choices here with my pathways. Probably want to get Scoundrel in play first, so this as Murkwater Pathway... Wouldn't be able to double 2-drop here, which I guess is a reason to maybe play a different 1-drop since we have more red 1-drops and blue 1-drops than we have black ones. So had I played Firebrand turn 1, I could have now gone Runner plus Storm Tamer, but uh, that's okay. So I get to attack for 2 and then play Rigging Runner. Opponent could be on the Neoform combo deck, which is a deck we just have to try and uh, apply as much pressure to as possible. We can use Firebrand to maybe kill one of their creatures before they get a chance to cast Neoform. If they play like a Stormcaller, we can kill it with Firebrand in response, and then they might not have a 2-drop to sacrifice. And there we see Wall of Blossoms. I guess for now, Firebrand and attack is fine. And then next turn I can maybe keep Firebrand back. I didn't spend my mana optimally to set up for next turn, as I'll only have the one blue source. But we did get to attack with a AC creature to push a bit more damage. Ooh, perfect. So now I get to attack with all. And I can just counter whatever they play. Opponent going for the Seagate Stormcaller into Neoform. Counter the Stormcaller in that's game. 
So yeah, if I had just had the Firebrand as my only interaction, killing Stormcaller would not have been enough since I could just neoform the Wall of Blossoms and keep comboing. So it was pretty important that we actually drew the Lookout's Dispersal here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And what do we think of this hand? We're missing red mana. So that's going to make it difficult to keep. Yeah, didn't think this will go. This is better. So I can go turn one Scoundrel, turn two Rigging Runner plus another one drop. Probably get rid of Storm Tamer and keep Sailor. Does Buccaneer change anything? Yeah, I guess I would rather play Buccaneer on turn one. And I guess I'll reveal Rigging Runner. Maybe should have revealed Scoundrel actually, so they don't prioritize killing my Buccaneer. And then turn two I can play the two powered one drops as opposed to Spectral Sailor to apply a bit more pressure. Our opponent on some sort of Sultai ramp Yorion deck. Could see a 4-mana Sweeper, which would be unfortunate. It's gonna be a Gonti instead. So it's gonna trade off for one of my pirates. Alright, another Captain's nice. Surprise they traded for Scoundrel instead of Buccaneer. Alright, if they had a Languish anyway. Yeah, Sweepers are tough to deal with. Pretty much need to have a counter spell for them or you lose. So I can either draw with Sailor or play Captain. Although Captain doesn't add a meaningful amount of pressure, so I think I'm better off drawing with my Sailor. Alright, is it Jigantha time? Maybe not quite yet. Opponent with an omen. They still have the Gaunty card. Not sure what that could be. Maybe it's my counter spell. There's Nissa. Yeah, we're pretty far behind on board here. The Nissa's gonna probably end the game pretty quickly. If I double block, I lose both creatures since they can deal two to the captain, one to the scoundrel, and then scoundrel dies once captain goes away. My best bet is drawing some flying creatures and then maybe neckbreaker. Land's pretty bad. Can put Gigantha in hand, but I can't even cast Gigantha. Fine trading Scoundrel for lands. No point in attacking Nissa. There's Yorion. The land fights for us. And Uro is gonna put the game away. Alright, GG's. So yeah, sweepers. Pretty tough to deal with. But that's not too surprising.
This is the get ahead, stay ahead type of deck. And once you fall behind, it's very difficult to recover. Guess we'll protect Gigantha. Go to one from Yurion attacking. Opponent escapes Uro. Technically not dead on board, but I would go to one and have to double chum block, so. And they did steal my neckbreaker, so we finally get to see it. Alright, we'll go out on our own terms. Like a true pirate. GG's, on to the next one. We are on the draw with a fine hand. Double Storm Tamer is pretty nice with a Neckbreaker if the Neckbreaker survives as we get those evasive creatures attacking for three. And then I get to go Territory into Storm Tamer, turn to Storm Tamer plus Rigging Runner. Take it from there. Steam Vents untapped. I guess I prefer playing Spectral Sailor here at instant speed. Or do I? Nah, maybe I still prefer playing Storm Tamer actually. It could get shocked end of turn, but if I do draw the counter spell, I would rather have the flash creature in hand so I can still play it end of turn if needed. And it's not a disaster if I don't play Rigging Runner since I can just play two one drops on turn two instead. So that's fine. Alright, that works too. Buccaneer, reveal Storm Tamer, play Storm Tamer. Alright, there's Pride Dragon. So yeah, we get to empty our hand here. I'm fine trading Storm Tamer. And then if the Neckbreaker resolves, we can be looking at a ton of damage, although it does die to a simple two damage shock. Double Sprite Dragon attacks with both. Let's see if they have a response. Didn't appear like they had one. Although it's unclear whether I even want to trade here, because if I draw land for Neckbreaker, my opponent could just be dead. But long term, I probably prefer trading for Sprite Dragon. Alright, Captain's nice. And then next turn we'll have the mana for Neckbreaker. So they didn't seem to have a shock in hand last turn, but they do have Unsummon. Yeah, that's fine. I could counter it with the Storm Tamer, but it's not necessary. So 
stomps the storm tamer. That's fine. Our opponent would still be dead on board before we play anything else. And they explode. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got an acceptable hand. Turn one, probably play Buccaneer. And reveal Scoundrel. And then turn two, we've got a few options. And then turn three, Captain plus another one drop. Turn to Growth Spiral, so a ramp deck. Maybe the Sultai mid-range ramp deck. I do want to play Scoundrel and then... Maybe go with an end-of-turn Spectral Sailor, in case they have a Sweeper. Gonna be a Fibblethip instead. Pretty good against my Scoundrel here until we play Captain. So, not sure what my opponent is up to. Ooh, Rune Raider's nice too. Do we go for a hasty Firebrands? Yeah, it seems fine. If we were worried about a sweeper effect, we could have played it differently, maybe play Rune Raider first. But I just want to put the uh, pedal to the metal here. Our opponent didn't instantly chum block, so makes it less likely that they're holding a sweeper. Unless the sweeper's extinction event, I guess. Just gonna be Nissa. So her opponent will have two blockers. Dispersal's nice. Second firebrand, kill Fibblethip. Yeah, that will force my opponent to trade the tower for one of my creatures, since they wouldn't be able to block Captain, otherwise they would take 8 exactly. And then I could play Ruin Raider, could keep up Dispersal. Opponent does have a lot of mana here, so if they play Giant Hydroid Crisis, I might prefer to counter it, even if they still gain the life and draw the cards. So I think I just pass. Well, that's convenient. Alright, Lookout's Dispersal coming in clutch once again. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable opening hand. We're missing a Lord, but we've got a fine start otherwise. And then, which creature do we start with? Probably Scoundrel. And now we get to play Rigging Runner with Raid. And I'll probably just play Storm Tamer too. Opponent on Jeskai. And a Sprite Dragon. I'll trade. Ooh, Rune Raider was an excellent draw.
Although a Darfleet neckbreaker, a bit of a pricey reveal. I see opponents on a feather deck. Sadly, don't draw the lands for neckbreaker, but I still want to enable raid. So we'll send in scoundrels, see if they block. They don't. And then we get to go end of turn double sailor and next turn neckbreaker. So we can kind of go wide, which uh, defeats the feather game plan of making this one huge creature that they can protect. They could, of course, kill neckbreaker at instant speed potentially. But now they're tapped out of red mana. Don't even have to take damage. Turn them all sideways. And that's game. Alright, sweet. We've got to see our neckbreaker and a Rune Raider in action, which we didn't see much in previous games. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, nice opening hands. So how do we sequence our lands? Definitely gonna play the Watergrave turn 1 into Scoundrel. That way I can tap this for blue on turn 2 to play Sailor, and then we can play a Lava Glide pathway as well. And then I guess we'll just reveal Storm Tamer, play Storm Tamer. Pathways are nice, but we also need a couple dual lands for situations like this, where we need a land to tap for two different colors. All right, we'll uh, go ahead and play Captain. Opponent takes it, and then we'll flash in Sailor end of turn. Squire gonna gain the opponent some life back. So what happens if I attack with everyone? I guess not the captain. Yeah, it seems fine. And then hope that they block a three-powered creature with walker so I can finish it off with my firebrand. Our opponent's not going to expose the walker to my firebrand, so now I'm probably better off just uh, activating Spectral Sailor instead. Might see Jade Light Ranger here, more Explorer creatures. Just another Seeker Squire. And a Bond of Flourishing, so this looks like a Bolas of Citadel deck, maybe, with this much life gain. Dispersal could be nice. So the Flyers can keep attacking. Is there any point in playing Firebrands? I guess I might as well. Probably got a counter second Wild Growth Walker. A 
could also take the approach of letting the Wild Growth Walker resolve and then countering the Explore creatures. But they probably have lots of Explore creatures left in hand. This maybe looks like a find finality as they're looking through their graveyard. Gaia's Blessing, never mind. Gaia's Blessing, I guess, can also be useful if you're playing a Bolas Citadel deck to prevent running out of cards. So is my opponent dead to an all-out attack? Block, block. Take 6 down to 2. Not quite. Let's see if Spectral Sailor can maybe draw another haste creature. Well, not quite a haste creature, but still pretty decent. Alright, opponents at 4. Let's see if they can stabilize here. Vivian Reed can shoot down a flyer. Let's see if you're worthy. Sailor down. Probably should have kept a blue mana so I could protect with uh, Storm Tamer here. Draw. But they seem dead to an all-out attack now. All right. So as you can see, even in a slightly longer drawn-out game, we still didn't put Gigantha in hand. Although I guess if we didn't have Spectral Sailor, we maybe would have played Gigantha this game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand, especially if we find our third land for Captain and Raider in time. Facing turn one Stitcher Supplier. And mills over Croxa, so... Looks like an Arcanist deck, just without Lurus as companion. So it's gonna be an uphill battle for sure. Play Buccaneer. And we'll reveal probably Scoundrel. And now my opponent might not want to chump with Supplier just yet, because they know about Scoundrel. But then we can play Captain to boost up the toughness of Scoundrel so they can still attack past Supplier. Young Pyromancer I'll definitely have to kill with Firebrand as soon as I get the chance. But I would also be fine with the trade. Alright, so our opponent's pretty close to escaping Croxa, they just need to hit their land drops. So I really just need to find land 3 here. Claim, gonna get back Pyromancer. And Thirst kills Buccaneer and makes a token. Yeah, that's bad. So I can trade my Scoundrel for a token and draw a card with Rune Raider. Probably better off playing Captain. Opponent is holding priority, so they might have another instant here. Hopefully it's not Shock. Could just be a uh, Village Rites. Yeah, it looks like Chump and Village Rites. Token is replaced by the Pyromancer. And we'll play Storm Tamer and then we can discard Scoundrel to the Croxa trigger. Start attacking in the air and drawing cards with Raider, although it's gonna be an uphill battle. Opponent opting for second Pyromancer instead. 
the rest to have a look. So they're being patient on Croxa, but making an army of elemental tokens in the meantime. Well, I'm attacking... A raid has been enabled. Alright, drawing more flying creatures is nice, because that's how we need to win the game. Keep attacking. And then I can play my lands and kind of wait and see what we draw with the Rune Raider. And then I can decide what to discard to Croxa. If I drew like a Neckbreaker, I maybe discard Sailor and then keep Neckbreaker to play next turn. And at some point we can also put Gigantha in hands, which we can discard to Croxa. Sailor seems slightly better than Storm Tamer here. And then I think I just take six. Take another three. We've got a two-turn clock with our flyers. Keeping pathway in hand doesn't accomplish much. So we'll just send our flyers and then put Gigant in hand that I can discard. And then I'm fine jumping with everything except Captain. Ooh, Dispersal puts me to four. Hazards. Yeah, that's probably gonna be game now. Can counter the hazards, but uh, the tokens have been made already. And now my opponent can just attack with all. They've got perfect information. Yeah, it's possible I should have jumped Croxa earlier or maybe tried to trade with the Rune Raider, but they would have been able to just escape a second time. So our game plan almost worked. Maybe if we draw like a neckbreaker last turn we can close out the game a turn sooner. Put on the tanks with everyone. And then... I can uh, jump, block, but we're still taking more than lethal. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Pretty likely to find our third land by the time we need to play Rune Raider. And in the meantime, we've got plenty of one drops to choose from. Probably start with a firebrand.
And, alright, I see opponents playing a mill deck with Bruvac. Does make for a pretty decent blocker here. Opponent does block. Ferris Tutelage, gonna mill me for four. Opponent's also playing white, maybe for sweeper effects. So finding a counter spell would be nice. For now, can attack with all of these. The fact that they didn't block Rune Raider, of course I could have used Firebrand, but that might imply that they don't have a Sweeper in hand. Either way I can play Buccaneer and then keep up double Spectral Sailor. And then I might as well take two, I don't think my life total is going to matter. And then I guess I'll play the Watery Grave in case I need to double Sailor and to use Storm Tamer. All right, Triple Sailor also works. It's going to be a Ruin Crab. If they have a Fabled Passage to go with it, they could do a lot of damage. Still mills me for six here. So I'm less concerned about a potential... Sweeper here, so I'm probably fine running everything out there. Could always decide to use Storm Tamer to counter some of the opponent's mill effects as well here. And then I'm just hoping to find one of our lords, Neckbreaker or Captain. Unclaimed territory, not so much. So, everyone can attack. Do I need to send anything at Ashok? I could just take out Ashok by sending the flyers. Maybe that's better. And then I can draw with Spectral Sailor or I can put Gigantha in hand. The sound has disappeared after Ashok uh, exiled our graveyard. And then I'm probably fine killing the crab. This is difficult to digest. Yeah, I'll just draw with my Spectral Sailor here. So we've got 19 cards remaining. And there's a neckbreaker at long last. So let's play that. And Storm Tamer can counter a potential settler wreckage. So that's not a concern. And there we go. Sweet. And our opponent explodes. So yeah, the Grixis pirate deck. Not the best deck in Historic. Pretty easy to exploit if you've got some sweeper effects. And the pirate deck doesn't draw its one counter spell. 
but it is pretty fun and closes out games pretty quickly, so it's good at punishing combo decks or slower decks that don't have good removal. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.